Ugh. In Peru, I got sick. <laughs> Whoa. This is the most ridiculous thing I think I have ever done here. Trying to fill the gas tank in Bolivia. The gas stations, two turned me down. And this really nice guy on a motorcycle, he bought me a thing to put gas in and he gave me copies of his ID so that I can get 10 liters at a time this way. I don't know, I'm kind of following him now. So he's gonna teach me how to uh, fill a gas tank. Oh man, thank you so much, Robert. Oh man, I can't believe that guy was so nice. Uh, so basically he showed me like the best way to siphon gas out of a container, you know, cause I said, you go, and he said, no, that's what everybody thinks, but actually the best way, and you just cover up this entrance so no air can get out and blow. And that starts the siphoning process. What a ridiculous process. The advantage to that is then we get the locals price. He said, just tell him, oh, my mechanic sent me to get some gas and you know, give him his ID. So that is pretty nice because it is half price compared to the 400 price. We're at about a third tank now from a quarter tank. So that's not gonna be a very quick way to fill a tank. I guess that worked out to be $5 for two and a half gallons of gas. At least I got more gas than I started with today because you know, Emily's over there in the hospital. Uh, she's got an IV, medicine coming in. Because of the sickness that started back in Peru, I went to kind of get a little surprise for her. Don't tell her yet. <laughs> but I got her a new set of AirPods. She's gonna be stoked when we get back and we give this to her. Taking care of the animals for Emily. I don't think we ever had a meet together like this. <laughs> Emily loves AirPods, but she's got two half working sets. One AirBud works. So I think she's gonna be stoked. Hopefully it makes her feel a bit better here in the hospital. something What'd you me? that's the eco-friendly wrapping Thank you so much for those AirPods. I can't believe you found those. <laughs> You're welcome, babe. Yeah, I really, really appreciate it. Hope it crazy. helps a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Way, way helps. You want to tell the people what's going on? Yeah. It's hard to say whenever you get sick that you need help because you always just want to say, this is a normal thing that just happened. So once a week, I would get horrible stomach cramps and pain, just horrible pain, and not be able to do anything except for cry in pain. It was really rough. But I thought it was an illness that I've had before or traveler sickness. So I self-diagnosed and I self-prescribed, which is a terrible idea. And then whenever it didn't get better still, I thought, because this only happens once a week. So I thought like, I have five days where I'm normal. So I get to the day where I have the attack again and yep, sick again. So I just thought this is in my head. I'm not gonna be able to get over this and just felt like I didn't know what to do. I thought it was stress, so. But the next week, I had no stress and still got sick. <laughs> so I finally decided to go to the doctor and they did a blood test and in my blood test, I tested positive for salmonella and having active salmonella, I guess, like 
I'm actively sick with it. After he, we found out my diagnosis, he tested positive just for the antibodies, so his he had already fought off salmonella. I think that with all of the activities we were doing, I really enjoyed every single one of them, and I really am grateful for the experiences, but I think that I was constantly trying to keep going and I never really, I only gave myself that one day a week to try and get better and it never really helped me get better. Last week I went to the clinic and got diagnosed and I got all these prescriptions and I, and Danny and I got a really nice campground spot and we thought this is gonna be great, we'll stay here for a week, we'll relax and recover Everything was going great. I thought I had completely gotten over it because usually the day that I would be sick, I didn't get sick. And last night I got really, really sick. Just again with the horrible pain and bloating and uh, it's, just, it's just horrible. I was awake at four o'clock in the morning. By eight o'clock, I asked Danny if he could talk to the doctor for me and and if we could head out to the doctor to get some treatment for this because it was obvious that the salmonella or something, something is still going on. The biggest part of this illness is not, is not treated. I had another blood test and we're waiting on the results now, but I've had like four or five IV bags. I'm not allowed to eat until tomorrow because Along with the blood tests, we've also have been in contact with the gastrointestinal doctor. I really hope that we have an answer. I have to sleep here tonight, and I only had breakfast, so I'm crazy hungry. But I never want to have that pain again. So yeah, Bolivia has been rough. <laughs> we literally have not done anything. We've yeah, we've been sick, we've been unable to find gasoline. Yeah. Oh my gosh, but even though my test showed I had salmonella, had already kicked it, um, I was super sick. I was eating at markets and stuff. You know, Emily's vegan, so she wasn't eating out as much. And I must have had four different stomach bugs at the same time. It was insane. The strong antibiotic for the stomach, it's called Cipro. That killed everything in my stomach. I'm good again. But yeah, Emily's had this relapse, and so got her uh, set up here. But uh, yeah, things are gonna things are gonna be okay. Yeah. Um, we found some good doctors here in La Paz, which you cannot underestimate how amazing that is that we found good doctors here in Bolivia. <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly a little chilly in here, but it feels good to have some nice big... These aren't even my socks, they're Danny's socks. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> my toes are so cold. <laughs> good morning. I feel pretty good. I slept very well. I'm really hope that Danny slept well because the road that we're on is pretty loud so I have a feeling that it was hard to sleep in the van out there. Um, uh, we're waiting until noon to talk to the gastroenterologist doctor so still can't eat until noon which is really really hard. I'm so hungry. But the nurse made me some nice tea, so that's good. There's a lot of sugar in it, and it tastes nice. I'm still on an IV. I hope they figure this out today. It seems inconclusive still, but at least this bed was comfy and it was nice and warm. I'm excited to get back in the van and hang out with my pets. I didn't get to say goodbye to them before I left yesterday because I didn't know I would be in here for so long. 
Oh man, so I talked, to, we talked to the doctor and she prescribed a whole bunch of stuff. We also talked to Danny's uncle who said, yeah, it does seem like a lot. If her, if what she thinks is wrong with me is true, then it's what I need to get better. So I have another IV for two more hours and then I can finally get out of here. <laughs> they also said that I can start eating again, which is so nice. I'm just been starving. Danny made me some oatmeal and he's going to bring me up some more food in a minute. She said I can only eat cooked food, which is so rough because I really, really enjoy smoothies and just like carrots and apples and everything. But for the next two weeks, I can only have cooked food. You don't really realize how much you eat raw food until you're not allowed to have it. <laughs> Disconnected! Wow, we're good to go, huh, babe? Yeah. I felt like I was plugged into a wall, and now I'm like, free! <laughs> yeah, free the matrix. <laughs> so, let's go see what the pets think. They're gonna miss you. What about Grammy over there, huh? You miss her? Alright, we're heading over to the pharmacy to get a bunch of medicines. Okay, so this huge bag is $100 worth and we still need to buy two more things. <gasps> well, I feel like in the US there's no way you get that much for 100 bucks. Oh my gosh, a so hundred let's go find another pharmacy. What do you got? <laughs> out of the hospital we got to come back every day so she can get a shot of antibiotic well you know Bolivia hasn't been easy but silver lining there's a really good skate park <laughs> on the way to the doctor <laughs> so come check it out dang they said no dogs allowed but check out this epic spot here I think this is my favorite skate park I've been to in a long time. Super cold here, but Danny made us a beautiful soup. Well, you know, we're not supposed to eat out really. We're supposed to fully cook everything for being food safe mm -hmm. for a couple weeks uh, while I'm on the meds. You know, we're already kind of looking forward to Chile and we went to the vet to get their papers. Kind of crazy that we haven't really done much in Bolivia, but for good reason, you know, recuperating. By uh, stroke of good will, the vet told us about the biggest party of the year here mm -hmm. is today. It's a parade of dancers. They just declared it a UNESCO heritage uh, event right before the pandemic. So. This year's gonna be a big one because people have all this pent up excitement about that. We asked the friends here at the campground if they wanna join us. They said, sure thing. A couple of French travelers on motorcycles. It starts at seven o'clock in the morning and ends way into the night. And there's just amazing dancing and 
really cool costumes and everything. It really reminds me of New Year's Day in Philadelphia. So I'm so excited to go and check it out. The friends here, they've already taken the route into town. So they're going to kind of show us that from the campground here we're staying, mm -hmm. which is a really nice little overland spot. Great internet, showers, bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And a perfect place for some Brita and Graham to run around. We let some Brita out for a couple hours this morning and the French motorcyclists love to play with her so that's really nice. A really cool thing about La Paz and I don't know if we mentioned before is that there is a teleferico or a cable car that goes from one end of the city all the way up to the other one because it's a huge valley that is really hard to get around by car and if you take a bus from that far it would take forever. <laughs> so it's really cool that they set up this this kind of metro that's completely different from any other city I've seen before. Yeah, let's check it out. Welcome to one of Bolivia's biggest events, El Gran Poder 2022. We like checking out the parade, but you had to pay for a seat to see it. Luckily, we found a free spot. Our next stop is the Bolivian Witches Market. These are ingredients from the Witches Market that are burned by Bolivians to bless a new home or for good luck. dinner time and taking my last three pills of the day and before I eat I have to take a little vial of something so yeah four medicines for the end of the day <laughs> I have to take them while I'm eating and for dinner tonight I made some soup with butternut squash quinoa and cauliflower it's super tasty in about two hours I have to take a probiotic as well so that my stomach doesn't get all messed up by just taking all these antibiotics. And also so the probiotics don't mess with the antibiotics. <laughs> I have a lot of rules these two weeks. Bland food and a lot of medicines. I also have to drink a ton of water all day long. The antibiotics aren't very good for your kidneys. So I'm trying to drink a lot of water so that it helps. And I've just been generally more careful with all food because I don't know where, obviously, whenever you get sick like this, you don't know where you get the, the, the illnesses from. I don't eat street food really because usually street food is just meat and I don't eat meat. So it's like, how did I get this? <laughs> I mean, so I just think it might have been me not cleaning something properly or like peeling an orange and then you touch the skin of the orange and you didn't clean the skin and then you touch the inside of the orange and popped it in your mouth you know that's like something you wouldn't even think about but i guess that's how people get sick <laughs> so it could have been anywhere honestly the food safety is zero so here and in peru using a lot of hand sanitizer before i put anything in my mouth yeah who knows but the reason I'm so sick is because I waited too long. <laughs> <laughs> Graham! You got your tail on me. In the end, I had H. pylori, which caused a stomach ulcer. But I'm feeling better each day. The activities can wait, but health does not. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, let us know in the comments, like and subscribe. And also we have a Patreon you can head over to if you want to support us a little bit more. See you guys next time.